Shalom. Salam. Shanti. Namaste. Peace. We are blessed tonight, right here, to have gathered together in a room in which many of the great religious traditions of the planet are sitting here together. But the reason I wanted to share those greetings with you is not just because we in this room are sitting together. I want us to remember that when we leave this room, when we go to a conference that may have all or practically all Jews, or all or practically all Christians, or all or practically all Muslims, or Buddhists, or Hindus, that it is not true that in those rooms are only Jews or Christians or Muslims or Hindus or whatever. The world is now too small. The force of the energy of all our religious traditions is too great to think that any one of us is living in a room, sitting in a room alone. In every room that we walk into, there are Muslims and Hindus and Jews and Christians and Buddhists. Even if we look at the faces in the room, the physical room, and don't see them. And that is true out of the danger of destruction, and it is true out of the possible joy of sharing and suffering. So I want us to leave here tonight ready to go back wherever we come from and go to, able to say in every room we're in, Shalom and Salam and Shanti and Namaste and Peace in every room we're in. So I'm here to speak to that third danger that Dr. King spoke to. The danger that he called at one point in the Great Riverside speech, the danger, the haunting danger of poverty, and another place in the speech that he called the haunting danger along with racism and militarism of materialism. And before I get to it, I want to tell you just one tiny strange tale that still deals with at least the danger of militarism and many other, perhaps, other dangers as well. It's a strange story that appears in the book of Joshua, of all places, the bloodiest book of the Bible. Joshua has crossed the River Jordan, and he thinks there's every reason for him to think that God is behind him, on his side. But he suddenly finds before him, not behind him, a strange, transcendent figure carrying a sword. And he says to the strange, trans transcendent figure, Are you for us or for our enemies? And the figure answers, No! I, uh, says the figure, am the captain of God's army, and God's army brings a holy, holy other truth. Not for you and not for your enemies do I fear, but for a deeper, higher, so now let me come back. 
In Dr. King's life, even that extraordinary transcendent prophetic